Steve, how is familial calomacronemia syndrome diagnosed? It's such a rare condition. We see frequently patients with elevation in the triacyl glycerides. It's a third cause of acute pancreatitis in the general population. What do you do when you have a patient like this to come up with this diagnosis? It can be somewhat difficult to diagnose. Even the lipid experts, the cardiologists and endocrinologists that specialize and run the lipid clinics, they'll tell you that it can be mostly based just on clinical decision making, so based on just signs and symptoms. First is, can you do genetic testing? We're in this genetic age. The problem is there are lots of different mutations that you can have, and therefore doing genetic screening may not pick up mutations, but yet a patient still has FCS. There's also the issue that there aren't necessarily readily commercially available labs to do genetic testing. So for the moment, yes, it may help confirm, but negative genetic testing, if available, may not give you the answer. The second approach is, could you just measure this lipoprotein lipase enzyme level? And there have been several studies that have looked at this, but that is only in a research setting and thus far is not commercially available, um, especially here in the United States. So mostly we base it on our clinical criteria. So patient presenting with pancreatitis, a patient where you've ruled out secondary causes of very high triglycerides, so diabetes, or maybe they have uh, certain medications that are driving up your triglyceride values. Usually we like to know that the triglycerides are elevated on more than one occasion, um, not just a one-time thing. And then it's physical exam. Do they have these called xanthomas, these collection of fat leading to these little abnormalities of collections in the skin or changes when you look in the blood vessels of the eye and you see something called lipemic retinalis where the vessels look creamy white instead of looking red. And otherwise, you know, there may be things on a blood test, low platelet count, or that your red blood cells are being chewed up called hemolysis. So all these things can be confirmatory. We especially, though, will think about FCS and the diagnosis. You have all that other information, but we look at, do you respond to conventional treatments? So we use medications like fish oil, and called fibrates, and maybe niacin. These are used in patients who have hypertriglyceridemia, so triglyceride values over 1,000 generally. We will use these therapies, and a clue that someone has FCS is that their triglycerides don't improve. They're, quote, refractory, unquote, to these therapies. And that usually is the case in FCS. Not always, but in the majority of patients. Unfortunately, a a patient may be accused of being non-compliant with therapy because the triglycerides haven't come down. But instead, that's telling us probably it is FCS because these therapies we use, these fibrates, fish oil, et cetera, they target lipoprotein lipase to bring down your triglycerides. In FCS, the lipoprotein lipase isn't working, so these therapies won't do anything. That's why you're refractory. To these medications. There are now more elaborate scoring systems being developed that have recently been published that may guide us in, as to is to someone truly have FCS, but it's based on all the criteria that I've already mentioned.